Hello. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Hello. How's it going? Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to be here live talking about some of our favorite topics. Right, Jan? Yes, yes, we are. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Heather, for having me uh, in your show, <laughs> in this live stream, <laughs> the MATLAB show. <laughs> it's, it's our show. It's everyone's show. Um, and speaking of, we're going to be answering questions, so don't hesitate to put things in the chat. We've got some people, hopefully, uh, around town that uh, will help out. And um, of course, we'll pause from time to time and answer your questions as we're going through. So thank you again. We'll do some introductions, I suppose. It's been a minute since I did a live stream. I was like, oh, wow, I think it's since like March or something. But I'm Heather Gore. I'm um, from the MATLAB product team. and work a lot on um, MATLAB and Python together. My background is in um, physics and machine learning, so I use both MATLAB and Python for that. And I, I do a lot of AI, data science kind of stuff now and uh, tend to you know, help users with these kinds of things. I'm excited to talk about deep learning today. And I'm joined by my, my BFF, Jan. Hello, thank you so much for having me today in uh in your show. So um, my name is Jan. Uh, I'm working with you, Heather, in the MATLAB product team. Um, <clears throat> a few words about me. I'm a big fan of open source. Uh, but guess what? I got hired by uh, MathWorks two years back. And um, well, it's been lovely, I have to say, so far. Um, I'm uh, working particularly on all aspects related to um, you know, interaction with open source, with the open source community, with um, the open source languages, in, in particular Python. Uh, so that's also the reason why I'm joining you today, is uh, to, to present this subject on MATLAB with TensorFlow and PyTorch uh, for deep learning for AI. Yeah, this is great. We uh, tend to, let's, I think it's great to even talk about how um, committed math, MathWorks uh, has been to open source from for a very long time, many, many years. And so even though it sounds surprising at first, it's a, uh, it's nice to, um, you know, be able to talk about that openly, right? Because <laughs> um, <laughs> we've been involved for a long time. So uh, yeah, thank you. We're very excited to be here. Um, what, what do we got here? We got, we started out with some questions, I think, you know, some of the questions that Jan and I tend to hear out in the field whenever we're talking about MATLAB and Python, of course, the first thing is, can I use MATLAB and Python together? <laughs> That's the one that yep. always comes to mind. And then they send in Heather and Jan to talk about that, if you have seen any of our previous shows. Um, but of course, yes, you can. There are many different ways to do it. And specifically for deep learning, um, you know, of course, using the uh, you know, TensorFlow, PyTorch are really common ones. Um, and you know, this is a common situation, whether you're working by yourself or you know, in kind of the situation we'll show here, how do our teams work together? You know, some people are using, you know, TensorFlow and PyTorch, some people are using MATLAB. Um, also one, <laughs> Jan can testify to this, you know, a lot of people doing research, you know, they're really interested in using those, um, you know, latest and greatest. Um, and then we want to use MATLAB for things like, you know, data processing and signal processing and a lot of the things that come along the way. Uh, and of course, I think we hinted at the next one already, uh, the embedded or, or not embedded in cloud deployment. And so, you know, that's one of the things that really, um, you know, MathWorks spends a lot of time on thinking about how to deploy the models, you know, which is why it takes a while for things to come out. Sometimes they need to be properly tested. The numerics have to work well enough to land planes and stop cars and whatnot. Um, so, you know, that's one of the big benefits of doing the things that we're going to be showing you today. So this presentation, it uh, was put together by our dear colleague, uh, David. Unfortunately, he's not with us today because he's uh, taking some vacation in Australia. Uh, but you know, let's pretend for the sake of uh, today's presentation. <laughs> yes, of that course. He's... The project manager is off surfing in Australia. <laughs> way, he's he's just Australia. out for the month, so we'll have to take over from here. <laughs> exactly. So he's hey, playing the role. Um, hi, David, if you're listening to us, uh, you, you can just uh, ping us in the chat and, and tell us what we are doing wrong, you know, because that's your job. <laughs> no, but um, seriously, so um, in this, uh, in the, the few um, uh, minutes we will have together, Heather will be playing the role of uh, the engineering team lead, and I will be playing the role of the data science team lead. 
And we're going to um, some storytelling and actual demo uh, on a very, very important, very serious subject. Uh, so it's not an AI enabled car project. Um, we decided, you know, it's not as important. So let's go and recognize bananas. Yes. Because it's something you face every day, obviously. Here, here, here is one. I never uh, know which you, fruit I want to eat. You never know, right? Like, I, know, I don't know. I want to know. Is this, is this a banana? Is this one? <laughs> Can I? No? Okay. Well, super it's, serious. It's super good important. to simplify, but it's also important. Yeah. You never yeah. know. And also for engineers, right? Like you may end up in a situation in a, an automotive context where you do need to recognize bananas. For instance, Absolutely. there's obstacles. See, this kind of situation, obstacle in life, you yeah. see a banana and you need to react in real time. Hence, the reason for us to introduce uh, a completely, you know, um, end to end AI system design workflow where you start and process the data. And I think you'll be showing us some of this. Um, on, you know, the capabilities that MATLAB bring to the table in terms of data pre-processing, uh, signal processing, image processing, all of those types of things, uh, labeling of data. I think we have some great tools uh, in order to, to do some interactive um, labeling. Uh, that's often very tedious. And I guess I would be focusing on the part that is the actual model training themselves uh, with, you know, whatever TensorFlow, PyTorch, we'd be going through some of this. Um, there's also the ability to simulate and test, to actually test, um, you know, these algorithms, this AI algorithm in the complete system uh, and environment and deployment. And deployment, okay, we mentioned embedded device, you said also cloud deployment, uh, enterprise system deployment, all sorts of, of things. Yeah, I think this is where, um, you know, really we're kind of focusing on step two in this uh, live stream because yeah. we hear so often, Correct. how do I, you know, what are the best ways to integrate MATLAB and TensorFlow or MATLAB and PyTorch or, you know, whatever, <laughs> the latest and greatest, anything. Um, and, you know, so that that's kind of taking care of part two. But, you know, you can find so many things, obviously, on the MATLAB channel here talking about the data preparation. Labeling is super important. We've had wonderful results from that. I think even we talked about that in um, the animal recognition, equally as important as bananas. Um, and <laughs> I'm like, I love kitties, but it's <laughs> it's very important. It was a big project, um, but it was the same kind of idea. We really needed to be careful about how it was labeled. You know, there's a lot of human error there uh, or unlabeled things. And so there's, there's a lot of great tools in MATLAB for that. And then, um, of course, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about sort of the tuning and things like that that you can do even once you have your uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch model, you can use uh, a lot of the simulation and parallelization tools at MATLAB to scale and to um, you know, tune those. So there's a lot of great uses for that. Not to mention the case where you know, we're handing off between teams where you know, I'm doing one part and then Jan's doing another part and then we need to bring it back together. Yes, and that brings up the question, you know, which tool should we use for such type of project? And obviously there are a lot of tools out there um in order to address the subject so what we'll be considering today is you know how can we be using uh, matlab and python um python based workflows um together um just like uh, as a starting point you can look up on our website there's a, a good story uh, from mitsui chemical that is addressing this uh, specifically how they are deploying some ai uh, systems with TensorFlow and MATLAB. So we'll be sharing some of those resources. But what we'll do right now is we like that. It's just go... realistic. <laughs> People it's, actually no, do it's, these it's things. A, it's actual, <laughs> we're not yeah. just making it up for academic it's purposes. A real thing. <laughs> yeah. So we're using we're going to be using some simplified demos, obviously. Uh, but the goal for us today is to cover those three uh, options uh, for us to uh, find ways to work uh, with MATLAB and TensorFlow together. I'll be starting with co-execution, if that's all right with you. Yeah. And what we can do afterwards is uh, you can go into um, directly importing models uh, from TensorFlow and from the um, Onyx uh, Open Neural Networks Exchange format. And then we'll also find a, a way to directly import model from um, the MATLAB Deep Learning Model Hub. Yeah. And of course, we'll so, answer questions along the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, don't hesitate. It's a live stream, so you can ask questions and we'll go into uh, all of the details. Um, so like the first I, aspect. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm wanna... sorry to interrupt. <laughs> well, not really. Sorry, not sorry. 
Um, but I wanted to mention, I, I think it's great that we're starting with this one because uh, this gives you the most flexibility. It's it's very powerful. You can do whatever you want to do in MATLAB and Python together. Um, you know, there's not really, it, it doesn't convert anything. You're just using Python as, you know, whenever I'll show some demos of the um, actual conversion process, which can be very useful for deployment. Uh, but it just, yes. it's nice to kind of think about when and why you might need those. And of course, we'll talk about that more too. Uh, once we wrap up the demos. Sorry, go ahead, now you talk. But, no, that's a perfect <laughs> introduction. Thank you for that. I, I wanted to escape from the slide. And I know, I, to, I know uh, how you logo. are. You just got to get the IDEs that's open. That's what I'm going to do, <laughs> exactly. So that's, that's where I start. So I'm going to start in my MATLAB environment. And here I've already set up some you know, webcam in order to do some live demo. So I will be using directly my webcam in order to extract some images. And what I've done is um, let me start by sharing you the link to all of this content that I'm going to be um, showing you right now. So this is the one content. Um, it's on GitHub um, slash MATLAB uh, dash deep learning. Um, and in, in this um, example, we go into image classification uh, in MATLAB using TensorFlow. So this repo, well, let me send it over here directly. And now let's proceed. So what I did is I simply retrieved the code from GitHub. Here it is on um, in my current folder. Um, and what I'll do is I will, um, well, I have prepared a live script, an MLX file that is a live script. Uh, nice. It looks like this. It's nice around my eyes. Yeah. So let me make it bigger also so that everyone can see and let me know if you know. Uh, you cannot read or like you'd like to for me to go uh, not, not as fast. Um, so we have like a table of content. We'll go through each of those steps, setting up Python, uh, importing and converting the data, calling a TensorFlow directly from MATLAB, and then we'll define a user-defined uh, function module um, to minimize the calls to TensorFlow. So just like, you know, simple um nice wrapper module that will um, simplify the call to to tensorflow from from matlab um what i'll do is i will probably so here is the, the solution of it you can see the banana and all Don't of it's running it no no it. Oh, I, it I already gave away the, the <laughs> that's all right at so, least they know it worked they'll stick around to see how yeah, they know where we are we're going with this <laughs> So what I'll do is I'll start by um, cleaning all outputs and I'll proceed step by step. And the first thing that I need to be doing is setting up my Python environment. So for this, I need to have Python installed on my machine. Okay. And in this case, I also need to have TensorFlow and we'll see that in the next step. And what I need to do is to make sure that MATLAB can find uh, the Python environment that is set up on my machine. So to do that, I'm simply calling this um, function, pyenv. So when you see me doing this or doing nothing, it's because I do can control enter, but I also can double click on this uh, blue ribbon on the side. And what it tells me here, it's okay, well, I found a version of Python 3.9. Um, you'll probably ask me, you know, which versions of Python can I be looking up to my MATLAB environment? And there are some stuff in the documentation, which I would recommend you to look at. Um, so right now I'm using MATLAB 22a, the latest version, and Python 3.9. So we can also support 3.8 with a, a 22a version and some table of um, association between the two. And always 2.7 until it finally gets properly sunset. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't use 2.7. <laughs> <laughs> So next, next thing is um, here I'm just using some bang commands just to reach out to the terminal with a command with um, the, the, the utility pip that is a Python package manager. Um, so what pip stands for is pip install packages. It's it's a little silly, it's kind of recursive, uh, but what it does is you know you can pip install TensorFlow for instance. Here I commented it. You can upgrade it. So let's just execute this one as well to see if we have TensorFlow properly installed and um, which version of it. You know, like it's here, it's 2.9.1. Uh, so I've updated it yesterday. Uh, so it's the latest version. 
Um, you can also use um, a command that we've introduced uh, since 22, 21A, sorry, in MATLAB. It's called PyRun. Um, so what it does, it's simply executing a Python statement from MATLAB. So we can run this one. And what it's going to be doing, it's going to be importing TensorFlow. And it's just going to print the version of TensorFlow. OK, so here it's just showing me exactly the same information. Um, it's just introducing this PyRun command. Um, and another way to call, uh, a simple way to call Python functions uh, from MATLAB would be to you know, prefix. First order is you just prefix every um, call you do to a function in, in Python with py dot. You use this py dot notation. And in this case, you would be calling the uh, square root function from the uh, math library that is directly in uh, base Python. So you don't need to import, it, right? It's, it's going to be importing it automatically for you. So that's very simple, just the basics. And only um, once, by the way. <laughs> It'll keep using it once it's imported. So you need exactly. to reload it if needed, yeah. That's correct. Sorry, I just haven't so, talked for like a minute, maybe 30 seconds. I had to that's okay. get a word <laughs> you, you in. You can feel free to, to comment <laughs> some of what I do say or uh, don't say, and then correct me if I'm yeah, si saying silly things. Likewise. So here we go. So um, the first thing we will do in this process will import uh, some data and convert those. So one way is, OK, trying to find a banana, and I'm not in the right folder. So obviously, it's not going to be finding the banana. So let me go in the right folder. And now, here, I'm importing this image and showing it. And well, it does look like a banana to me. Not exactly the same as the one that I have over here, um, probably because it's a little older than the one. It's a little more green, this one. Did you get that so from MathWorks this, the, in the free fruit yes, in the morning? Yes, it's a free fruit. Excellent. This company, I have to tell you, this company is so great. I love the free fruit. Yes. <laughs> so every every morning I come for breakfast and I have bananas. Especially if you get there early. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so what I'll do instead is I'm going to um, use my webcam here. I have it set up on, um, so not this one, the other one, the integrated camera. I can just call it with this command um, webcam. OK, uh, I need um, a package for that. Um, if you call the webcam uh, function on your end, um, it might tell you you need to download this support package. So that's what I did. And I assigned it to this variable cam. And now what I can do is I can simply preview, look at here and see. So it's not the same camera, but let's see. So what I'm going to be trying to do is take a photo of me with a banana and see if we'll be able to recognize. OK, so here I get a photo. Good. So now it's my um, image original. Um, let me comment out this one over here and represent image origin. Perfect. So now we are using this one. The first thing we'll be doing is, based on this image, we will be converting the data. OK. Um, so first, in terms of the image that is expected from the neural networks that we will be using. And that's um, so common. I think this is in every yeah, single example. Common. It's yeah. just, you know, whatever they the were trained is... on, you know, same with uh, signals and text, you know, the lengths sometimes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So that's what we do. We use the e EM resize function. We just uh, resize it. OK. And now there's one silly thing that TensorFlow needs us to do is to permute the order of the channels. Um, don't ask me why. I'm not going to get into that right now. But I'm just doing it. I'm just you know permuting the order of the image. Uh, with a quick disclaimer, no banana were hurt during the conversion. Just very important. It's just a silly function that I wrote. Uh, don't, don't pay attention to. Uh, to me saying silly things. So now it goes to the interesting part. That is um, coding tensorflow.keras, that application, and the actual neural network that we'll be using. So the first time you call it, um, it may take a while because it's going to go and download um, the pre-trained model uh, from some Google uh, servers. And right now we are uh, defining here this viable model. And it has a whole sorts of attributes, metrics, losses, and so on. Um, the one Everything thing we you may want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So very helpful. I'm not going to go. 
So, you know, it's obviously it looks overwhelming, but whenever you're trying to tune, it's e it's nice to be able to access that all that information. Sorry. Indeed. Carry on. And the first one that I want to uh, show you is this one is a layer. So I'm going to turn it into a cell so it looks good in, in here um, in the live editor. So you have the input layer, then you have rescaling, you have convolution, convolutional uh, to the uh, layer, then normalization and activation and so on. So you can look at all of the layers like this and you have um, a bit of uh, a little more than 1000 of them. So what you do that next is you turn your image into a NumPy array. Uh, so it's, it's quite simple. You just use this uh, py.numpy method uh, dot as array, and so it's going to translate this into a Python ND array, which is the format that is expected by TensorFlow. And then you pre-process with this pre-process input uh, method. Now, finally, we got to the stage where we are going to predict uh, use the predict uh, method from the model. And we will be retrieving, okay, up here we, we do the prediction. Uh, we get um, this uh, vector of one, one, one by 1,000. And we just look at uh, the, the associated label. So in terms of here, um, the chances, the statistics for it to be a banana, it's like 80%. It's like, you know, 80% confident that it's going to be a banana. Maybe I'm just in the background, but it seems to be fine for him. He still recognizes the banana. So here I'm going to print the image with the uh, label here that says this is a banana. So I'm officially a banana. That's um, about it for the first um, part that is, you know, calling directly TensorFlow from MATLAB. Now, another approach, um, just going to take a few more minutes to go through this. It's writing a convenience module. And here I'm calling it tfinference.py. So I'm just going to look at it inside of MATLAB. So as you can see now, it's nicely printing out the code uh, with syntax highlighting and everything. Um, so it's just very simple, importing TensorFlow, loading the model with the first method, and pre-processing and predict in one, uh, one, you know, one, one function. So we have one function to do it all. Um, so let me close this. And now I'm going to do exactly the same as previously. But as you can see, with just a few less steps, that would be loading the model, pre-processing and predict, and retrieve the, retrieving the label still to print uh, the figure. So taking some time to load the model still. See here. And once we are done with this, it's going to be pretty quick for the inference, the prediction. Um, and then, you know, getting the label. And finally, same results doing pretty well. So I'm letting you with some exercise for you at home. Optional, you can do batch processing of images. Um, and here we have a few images, you know, that you can play around with. And yeah, that's it for the first demo. So um, maybe like a, a quick summary in terms of execution, what it enables you to do. Uh, first, calling Python from MATLAB. And in this case, it was to access any AI framework and network. So I did this example with TensorFlow. I could have done exactly the same with PyTorch or Scikit-Learn or XGBoost or whatever AI framework you like. Um, and you can also do the other way around um, with what is called the MATLAB engine API for Python. Uh, so calling MATLAB from Python. And it's particularly interesting uh, to reuse some domain-specific processing, for instance, signal processing uh, that you have in MATLAB that are pretty good uh, with apps and everything. Uh, and we do have example online that uh, I can share with you after that. So yeah, that was the first one. Um, over to you. Yes, that was excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I think, um, like I mentioned, though, through interrupting, um, I, uh, all right, sorry, I can't do two, two things at once. Um, I think, you know, the first method that we are showing is very powerful. You know, like you mentioned, like, you could go kind of step by step, you know, through um, the whole thing, you know, with pi dot tf dot whatever you know so so you have the most control i think whenever you're um working with 
that, you know, if you, uh, in this method that we'll talk about, it's more about converting it into a way that MATLAB can understand um, instead of using the uh, Python way. Sorry. I see you're struggling with Windows this morning. I Windows, am like the very much, <laughs> I'm very much struggling. I will say I'm, I'm using the Teams interface through Microsoft Edge. And no offense, but I'm a Firefox girl, and I usually like, Ooh. yeah. Anyway, uh, so I'm very. Oh, um, let me. Sorry, I was. Uh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it was only on PowerPoint. Yeah, that's funny. I guess. Yeah, sorry, can't caption from MATLAB yet. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So, Thanks um, for that. <laughs> I didn't know where it was coming from. I was like. <laughs> Is it a feature yeah. in the live stream? I don't know. Yeah, in uh, PowerPoint, there's a um, use subtitles feature. So yeah. I usually have that enabled for, you know, accessibility is good. Um, so speaking of accessibility, model accessibility, that is. Uh, so, you know, I think what Jan showed, we see a lot whenever we are talking to people who want to train a model or who want to really kind of fine tune it or, you know, PyTorch or some of those kind of custom things. Uh, but this is a; these are really good cases that we'll talk about next for, you know, actually using a model that's already trained, and you know maybe tuning it or uh, going through, you know, kind of that workflow that we were talking about where you you already have a trained model. You know maybe the data scientist trained it, or you know Jan in our role playing situation he trained it, and now I'm gonna you know stick it in MATLAB. So uh, we'll yeah we'll share the link. So this is um, on the GitHub for. Uh, there's a lot of really great deep learning examples uh, in this. Um, let me find it here. All right. And so it goes through step by step, you know, all the things that you need. So I, like Jan, I had made a um, live script kind of going through the steps. So, <clears throat> wait, let me get out of PowerPoint. Okay, here we are. So the first step is to um, get make sure you have TensorFlow because Jan well uh, went through that part already, um, and there's code in the repo that will run this for you just to get the model that we're using in the repo. It's an image classification, again like with the banana important banana example. Um, I had already run this, but the code is quite easy to understand. It's you know a couple lines there. Uh, and I wanted to mention too, while Jan was showing this, it's nice that the uh, syntax highlighting is updated now, so you can really easily edit uh, in Python um, or you know, with Python syntax highlighting. All right, so then um, we're bringing in the class names for this just from uh, SqueezeNet, since that has the same, uh, you know, the same class names. Uh, it was changed on, tra trained on the same database, so uh, no big deal. I already brought that in. And then uh, we want to import the network. And so this is where uh, we'll share uh, the doc example for this, but import TensorFlow network, it's going to you know, import it and then do the conversion. And it throws a ton of warnings. Uh, it even says this in the example. Uh, and you can see it's just a lot of warnings. <laughs> My husband walked by, he's like, what is going on over there? I'm like, don't worry about it. It's going to work, I swear. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's, it takes a, it takes a minute. It takes a while. I wanted to time it so I can be transparent about how long it takes. But basically, what's happening is it's taking that TensorFlow network and you know, understanding, taking all those weights, all the parameters that Yam was talking about, and you know, recreating that network in MATLAB. And so this is a pretty big one. Um, even SqueezeNet is pretty big, so it takes a minute. Uh, and I think it was like about 15 in this case um, on my laptop, at least. But you I'll, remember when I was looking at the layers, I think it has 1,000 layer and the output layer is probably like also one by 1,000 uh, different, 1,000 different classes. So that's yeah. probably also some yeah. of the reason why it's taking so long. Definitely. It's a big one. <laughs> so yeah, it impor imports, translates, assembles, and then uh, you get some information about it. And so, uh, also, with some of these, there are some custom layers that you need. This is also true for any transfer learning example. I'm going to get too into deep learning, but uh, I'll try not to. 
it's, um, you know, you often need to change the last few layers, especially in image um, examples, you know, you need to change the classification layer, the, you know, last few that uh, tend to, you know, do the, um, you know, summary things. <laughs> um, and so this is an example of doing that. And uh, this is also gonna take a minute, but the network analyzer is really, really useful for this application. Um, although this example, hopefully, uh, it translates perfectly. Uh, the, all the layers are represented well in MATLAB. Uh, although it gave us some warnings, you know, those are reasonable. It's doing, it's just letting us know that it's doing the defaults. Um, but the uh, network analyzer will actually, well, once it opens, it'll actually help you, you know, see which ones are giving errors or which ones aren't complete or aren't represented. And then you can click in um, through the app. You know, again, this is like huge. <laughs> I probably should have run it before. Uh, but it's good to see because you can go through the entire graph, look at all those layers. Um, and again, I guess where I ran this earlier, <clears throat> now it's probably going to give me errors just because it's live and that's how it works. Yep, that's live effects. Exactly. Oh, yeah. No, we have no errors. So, pretty big network. But no errors, no, errors. no warnings. Good job. There was a warning. I'll just go for it anyway. <laughs> But yeah, this is super useful whenever you have, yep. you know, really complicated layers that aren't represented. And there's some great info in the doc for how to mitigate that, um, you know, by if it's not exactly represented, you know, what you can do to work around. Yeah, and but, it's cool because it's, um, I don't think I've seen anything like it in the open source um, world. Like, um, I know, you know, you, you can find some tools, but um, I quite like our, yeah, like, like exactly. this one as well, like the deep network like, designer, experiment manager, all of those are, yep. they are pretty good. Yeah, especially, and I think they're really, they work really well hand in hand because you can bring in the yep. TensorFlow or PyTorch model and then use the apps to really get into it. And like, um, especially since well, it's MATLAB, we have a lot of people like me that spend a lot of time on the math of deep learning and, you know, realize it's just matrix algebra, no big deal. <laughs> um, but, you know, when you're like, ooh, convolutions, ooh, yeah. Like, what are we doing? You know, what kind of stuff do we got there? You know, so um, if you're actually trying to change these uh, and maybe you're not as well versed in uh, layer mechanics, um, you can use the apps and it'll help you out a lot. All right, let's see what happens, see if it worked. I'm gonna go. So this is the example from the uh, repo. With a dog. With a dog. And so just like in Jan's example, we're always having to resize, rescale based on what that network was trained on, um, just common life. And then we just classify it. So just like any MATLAB deep learning example, where'd you go, little puppy? There you are. All right, there we are. So, um, but yeah, just like any other kind of example, we just need to deal with that. And then we just classify, pass in that network that we converted, and it's a little Pomeranian. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, oh yeah, much more important the, things. I always try peppers. So I did make a little function that's just gonna classify it, kind of go through that just so I can change the image. Mm -hmm. um, and again, peppers, very important, but let's- Much more important for today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what is that? I have no idea. I didn't run it before I got the banana picture. Uh, so yeah, I that's not working. <laughs> well, that would be like heart or banana. Thing. You just leave it like alive for us to discover. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the fun part. Let's see if we can get a peacock. Maybe we will ask the audience to send us some images so that we can classify <laughs> those. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you, all right. You, I guess you can just go ahead and, and download the. Uh, the repo and well in this case i think for you you need the uh, deep learning toolbox right um yep yeah and that's it and there's a um support package that you need to i think here, i'll show it in here um yeah there's yep. a toolbox converter for tensorflow models and also for onyx so if uh, onyx is a really popular um, format to do that too i have just so one what more. else do you have it's a bear 2010 <laughs> oh, yes. American black bear. He even knows it's American. Impressive. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> like, wow, I'm learning. Yeah. 
also in the dark. That's always my, oh, oh, um, wow. I try to see if it, you know, can pick that up. Cool. Yeah. It's really useful right. when you are, you know, walking, or walking out at night and then you cross a bear, you need this kind of AI, don't you? It's like a life, and, life or death kind of a situation. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe uh, you'll have a banana, the bear is trying to eat your bananas or something. Yeah, yeah. all sorts um, of scenarios, extremely important. Very common. Um, I guess, should we uh, pause for any questions? I'll just kind of re recap here. Um, so again, we're, we showed just uh, converting, you know, importing and converting those into a MATLAB model, which again is super helpful whenever you're trying to deploy, especially with, um, you know, GPU coder and like trying to run on CUDA and um, see, you know, it's just a MATLAB model, you don't have to do anything fancy. Um, so, uh, yeah, is, are there any questions that I, I haven't really looked at the uh, chat in a minute? <laughs> any um, questions that we can either. take before? Um, I think we had some questions around uh, GUIs. Um, you know, do we develop any GUIs that can help us connect uh, MATLAB and um, with Python, Keras or TensorFlow instead of scripting? So that's a good question. And, and that's when I pointed to, um, we have one convenience that is the, the live task. So we have this notion, I don't think we've gone through that, but you have different types of apps in MATLAB. Uh, you've shown us like the standalone apps, like um, the, um, did you show us? Um, it didn't show a live task, I don't think, uh, but here's just an example of yeah. a bunch of them. And oh, I don't think I've downloaded yours yet, um, but there is a nice yeah. live task. I can uh, do it if you want. Um, I can just quickly show that. So what sure. it does is essentially uh, not specific to um, TensorFlow um, or Keras, um, but what it does, it's just enabling you to write Python code directly inside of MATLAB. Uh, so let me show you that. Uh, and I think there's also a version of this, not finding my MATLAB session, where is it? It's here. Okay, and I need to share my screen as well. So what it does is, you can see here in um, this repo still, uh, you'll have a, um, a live script MLX. Um, and what it does, it's um, doing exactly the same as what I did previously, but here it's going to be leveraging what we call the live editor task for Python. And if you click on it, it's um, well, it's a, it's an open source development we've done recently with a, a colleague of mine, uh, Lucas Garcia. Um, so we were like, you know, it'd be nice to have this GUI where we can directly enter code and we can just run it and play around with it. So it's like kind of an interactive thing. Um, so let me show you that. Um, I'll share the link to this so that you know everyone can uh, hear download it on their end and yeah, it's great it's almost like a little interpreter inside of matlab yeah correct it's building on top Just of uh, pyran in there yep that's um, the, the the technology is built on its uh, pyran we've introduced pyran in 21 uh, a and in 21 b or later you have the ability to develop your own uh, life task your custom life task so that's one uh, we felt like it was um, a cool one we could develop let me take back this example of the banana. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, so I still do the same. I'm resizing and everything. But this time, what I'm doing is I'm using this live task instead. So where I find it, it's here in, under task, just as uh, as I was showing us. But as you remember, uh, she did not have this one. This is my task. I don't. I developed it, or let's say I gave the idea, and then Lucas developed it because I, I, I'm not as good as Lucas for developing those kind of things. Uh, I could show you mine, like the first version, it's very ugly. Um, so what you do is just simply click on that, and then it's going to be bringing in this UI inside of your environment. Um, and let me just run it. So it's actual MATLAB code that is generated under the hood. Here, it's just taking this um, Python sets of command statements, you can also use a script, a Python script that you get from your colleague. Um, you can set up, specify the input parameter and the output parameter. So all of this is specified over here. And what it does is going to generate um, here this Pyran command. 
and it's just going to be running it for you. So here we go. Let me make it smaller. And it's going to do exactly the same as previously, but this time, like completely just pure Python code, you copy paste, you include it inside of this, and it's going to classify your banana. Um, so that's like one GUI. And what I'd definitely recommend is so you, you know, you go ahead, you um, download this one, you can star it. Don't hesitate to give us a star if you like it. Um, you can also fork the repo. That's really cool. So like you can, you know, have your own and modify it. And if you want to make like a specific version that is specific to TensorFlow or PyTorch or whatever module you'd like to call, well, you can just, you know, um, develop your own and, and share it with us. We'd love to see what you come up with. So that was a creative, yeah. uh, creative part of the, of the conversation. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that's, I think that's really important to show is we're talking about all the different ways that we can do this. Uh, oh, wait, let me show my screen again. Um, and that's a very easy, nice way to do things. Thanks to Jan and Lucas. All right, so uh, last but not least, we'll um, talk about the deep learning model hub, and then we'll continue to take some questions, point you in the right direction. And so um, this is another common way, you know, again, it does kind of whenever you want a model that already exists, like a transfer learning work, workflow, and you want to kind of um, tweak or tune as you go, uh, there's a ton of them in this deep learning model hub. So I'll show you. It's really great. Um, David put it together, our project manager from the beginning. Uh, he's also, if you have any ideas, you can uh, talk to him on, you know, different models that you want to see. But again, there's a lot of examples, really great stuff on the uh, MATLAB deep learning Git and um, including the model hub right here. So uh, you can sort by any of the different applications. I um, was I doing earlier, like the pose ex estimation example. Uh, but you can see there's all different kinds, you know, with the uh, actual code links to the git repo for all of them. This one is pretty nice. So. Yeah. So I'll just even run this in the browser quickly so you can see it. Um, oh, but wow. you know, again, that's it's really cool. So you can just directly yeah. run uh, some of the de uh, you know demos from the doc documentation in MATLAB Online. Yep, Ooh, right there. Open Perfect. in MATLAB Online. Cool yep. that. And that way you don't have to worry about whether you have the toolboxes or the whatever. <laughs> you can add, you can, you know, write some code and do some things with it too. So it's a good way to practice. That's exciting. Oh, geez. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> what have I done? And you spoke too fast. <laughs> <laughs> of course. They should have like this container, like, um, like a pre-built image with all of those dependencies, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, but really yeah, it's similar to that where, although I'm using my own MATLAB online in this case, you don't have to be logged into anything. You can just run it right in the browser. Um, I would have normally kind of stepped through the sections, but I wanted to just kind of run everything and then I can talk through. Um, so it's just using this human pose estimation, uh, which is Onyx format. And so Onyx is pretty generic. You can use a lot of different kinds of models in Onyx, and then it just unpacks it. So it's really nice for different, you know, cross-platform stuff. Uh, and so it's very similar to the import TensorFlow network, um, you know, just import Onyx layers. So same kind of idea, takes a minute to sort of rearrange things. Um, but it's a great one because, wait, do I know any of these people? Oh, yeah, that's Bruce. That's, uh, what's his name? Um, <laughs> they're in the back. Anyway, so uh, that, you know, it's just kind of going through, you know, using one of those uh, pre-trained models, you know, as soon as you do the import on its network, it's then converted into a MATLAB uh, model and you can do your MATLAB things with it, like deployment and uh, all that's fun. <laughs> um, you know, your pre-processing, your tuning, deployment, you know, whatever, what have you, it's a MATLAB model at that point. So very similar to what we were talking about before, um, but you know if you, uh, where did that go? Yeah, <laughs> if you take a look, you know all the different sorts of things that you're likely trying to do. Um, we've got models already pre-trained for you. 
So yeah. definitely take a look at that. I love what David is doing with this, it's really curating all of those models. And I think it's, you know, it's just saving so much time when you have like already a pre-trained model. That's one of the things I think um, that is quite important with, with deep learning that you, you, well, you can just take a model that already exists and can maybe, you know, retrain it for your purposes or just change the, the final layers if it's doing like uh, classification and you wanted to do a uh, um, regression instead, you can do some surgery on the model with um, with our apps with the deep network yep. designer. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was gonna say the um, oh, sorry, <laughs> GitHub's um, background is black. Where does that one go? Uh, yeah, the uh, experiment oh, manager for that one is, that one yeah, that's fantastic. Cool. Um, and, and again, it's just using MATLAB, setting up a couple parameter, you know, endpoints and hitting a button and go to town. So very useful. We see a lot of people, you know, trying to do that kind of thing. All right. Awesome. Let me so, share a link in the chat. Excellent. Um, thank you. So yeah, I guess we pretty much covered um, most of what we wanted to cover. I think we have a couple of questions I just noticed um, in the chat, so we'll do that. Um, but, you know, again, we kind of talked about this a lot, you know, it's very common, you know, you to do what we talked about today, you know, using um, TensorFlow or PyTorch, converting it to a MATLAB network, and then you can deploy or just keep it as is. And you can also deploy in the cloud that way. And so we did it. David would be proud. Uh, we showed the co-execution. And, you know, again, that's that's a very powerful. You have kind of full control over, th over everything. And then um, we showed the... Uh, converting to MATLAB model, you know, which is easy to take into embedded and you know, enterprise applications. Any, anything else to add, Jan? Just, you can just click one last time. Oh, Banana. Okay. Our yeah, our super friend. important. Yes, we did it. Sorry. Excellent. I was using today. <laughs> <laughs> just focusing too much on the task at end at the same, you know. That's all right. This is, we have to have fun while we're doing it. Yeah, I'm going to share also in the chat some reference to our blogs on deep learning. I think those could be really useful, especially for the one uh, amongst you that are starting with deep learning. It's definitely not an easy subject. We're trying to dumb it down a little bit, you know, with this example on banana and stuff, but it's it's really because also it's such a difficult subject. So um, and also you have the on ramp. Uh, the on-ramp is pretty cool because it's just getting you, you know, like to the basics of what uh, deep learning is and how you can um, apprehend it. So it's and and it's the way um, the way it's done is all with all of those on-ramps um, we have. It's uh, it's very pra practical. Like you, you know, you, you use it and you get a sense of what it means for you, uh, which I think is. Fairly different from what I've seen in like MOOCs, right? Like online courses. I love um, all of the online courses on TensorFlow uh, and and Python in general. But uh, what I get is that it's um, it can get quite theoretical or difficult, um, and um, also it's like it's taking a lot of time. I I love doing uh, online courses. I do it all the time, and I do lots of them. But um, you know, for those who may not have as much time, um, then I think the on-ramps are really a good way to get started. And then you could like, it's very complimentary. That's the way I see it. Yeah, definitely. And you can also, yeah, you can always dive into more once you get through it. And it's also nice that you can just have MATLAB there. So you don't have to set anything up. It's already there for you. Oh, all right. I guess that was it. Um, yep. I'll put, um, I saw there are a couple, I couldn't quite find it. I was looking for the, um, the detach function. I know what you mean. It's just kind of like, it's almost like a pop. It just takes it out of the gradient thing uh, <laughs> process. Sorry, I'm like losing it now. It's been almost an hour. Uh, but there is something in MATLAB. I, I was browsing through the doc. I couldn't think of it. Um, if anybody knows what it is, there is an equivalent um, to detach. It's just not called that. Um, so yeah, you can uh, poke around maybe at the documentation, kind of browse and see um, if there's something that sounds like what you want to do. Does if I can find it, I can throw it in the comments uh, after this. Um, there's one question about, you know, whether there is a, a language converter where a MATLAB script for deep learning can be converted into a PyTorch 
for the MATLAB for big people to use in the future. So the way we do is um, if you would like to collaborate with colleagues eh, that may not be using MATLAB at all, um, we have one solution that is called uh, the compiler SDK. So what it does is essentially compiling your MATLAB code, your functions into um, a, a Python package. Like you have different targets. You can uh, you, you can have an, uh, a standalone executable. You can have Java. Uh, you can have Python, and uh, you can have Docker containers. That's really really cool. It's just released uh, this new target for um, since 22A. Or previously it was uh, um, already available with a compiler, but now we can release it as microservices, just not like Docker containers, but also Docker containers that have an HTTP endpoint so that you can deploy it in web environment uh, as a you know cloud native microservice. So that's really cool. Um, and so all of this you can you know generate the code, um, and it's going to be loyalty free, uh, ro ro royalty free. Sorry, uh, like you don't need the license. Use your loyalty lies elsewhere. Yeah, well you know it can be loyal to whatever language you want then. And um, it, so you can share this model, uh, the set of functions, maybe also pre-processing that you've done in MATLAB. You, you generate this Python package. You hand it over to your colleagues that are doing only Python. And you know this SDK, it's just providing them with the tools they need to, to, to do whatever they'd like. Uh, so that's definitely what I would suggest. Uh, let me maybe find a way to share a link to this um, compiler SDK. Yeah, that's a great, great solution. And they don't have to use MATLAB at all. It's just, you know, they can use whatever language they're using. Yep. Um, another one I saw, can we create a custom layer in PyTorch and train the custom layer in MATLAB? Yes, um, I will say that probably, you know, there those are kinds of the cases where it may not be represented perfectly or, you know, some of the information might be missing if there's not already a easy, you know, converter. But then it, using the way that Jan showed, um, you can pretty much do anything. So you can use your custom layers, um, just like pi dot, you know, what, whatever you're trying to do. The easiest way to do that would be to wrap it up into a module um, or, you know, a block of code so you don't have to call um, line by line like that. Um, but yeah, it should, it should work perfectly fine as long as, you know, whatever you're doing in Python should be fine that way. We do have a question about uh, Anaconda. Uh, and switching between environments. So I guess it's something we didn't go into, uh, like all of the setup, which can mm -hmm. be quite tedious. So I think it's good going back to this. So right at the beginning, as uh, you know, as I was showing how to connect to Python, uh, we have this command pyenv. But uh, what you can do is uh, give it a few uh, parameters, for instance, uh, which version of Python you'd like to use. Um, so you can be using Anaconda. You can be using any version of Python you'd like. Uh, you can even be using it inside of virtual environments. So um, if you create your virtual environments, you just need to know where the interpreter, the Python interpreter, is located. Uh, and that is not the same if you're using Conda that stores those environments centrally, or VN, for instance, that is storing them um, in the folder in which you create um, in which you, you create the environment. So you need to point to this location. Uh, that's what you need to be doing. Uh, so yeah, definitely you can be using Anaconda or you know virtual environments as well. That's perfectly yep. fine. No problem. And uh, you're trying to, to switch to different <laughs> versions, but you don't have them installed. <laughs> um, no, I took all of them off my path. Like I have so oh, many okay, path yeah. issues right now because of the other stuff we're doing. So very important don't, to don't mention. Me. It. No, no, that's very important to mention also, like the need to have things in the Windows path, otherwise you, you cannot find them, right? That's that's right. what uh, MATLAB is relying on, like any software to find where Python is located, right? Yep. So. And that's one of the most common errors, I think, when people are trying to connect, you know, at first either direction is just making sure that your OS can find both of them and they can talk to one another, essentially. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yes, I think that was our last slide still. Any other questions, thoughts as we wrap up? Some people, Vladimir, are trying to make money uh, with deep learning. Uh, 
well, I don't have good advice. Don't trust me. I invested on Bitcoin a, a few months back. So <laughs> like crypto I'm not going to give you some advice right now. <laughs> um, th yeah. The future in AI, though, is FX in my mind. Um, but, you know, a lot of the things that go around you, we, there's so much research on like tweaking all of the little layers, you know, but like helping people do something with it. I feel like that's the future. If you want to make some money, consult, consult. Maybe. I don't know. Don't take my advice, though. <laughs> I, I have no money, <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm clearly not using it. No, I, I'm, I have money. I'm fine. All right. So good. I was just killing some time, making sure we didn't have any other questions. Um, I guess we're good. This was an excellent conversation. This is nice to talk about. We got great questions. Um, and also, you could check out some of the other ones that we did on the co-execution. There are other live streams that Jan and I have done, like top questions and, um, you know, some of the things that might have come up that aren't specifically related to deep learning. So thank you again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jan, for being a partner in crime for all things Python with me. Thank you, Isa. All right. We'll Bonne see appétit. you next time. See you. Thank you. What is the delay I could like see in parallel that uh, we're like one or two seconds, maybe five seconds later, right? Something like this.